I would like just to introduce a little bit Serge because Serge is well-known researcher in database at the INRIA, ENS, and is a uh, member uh, of several boards, such as RCEP, a French regulator for telecom. Is also writing blogs, novels, essays, and uh, I think you can find on his website very interesting publication, sometimes in French or in English. Uh, so uh, now, Serge, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Didier. Okay, so I'm going to speak on the content uh, moderation in social media. Uh, I'll talk briefly about AI, but most of the talk will be on uh, social media and content moderation. Okay, so that you already know, uh, for the people who have white hair like me, they may remember the well and forums, uh, internet forums. Uh, now we have many social medias, the big ones have, uh, six of them have more than a billion users. And you can also find social media functionalities in, in plenty of other uh, services. So that's something that we're living with now all the time. And they, they do have a very serious impact on society. And uh, some, some of them are very positive. Some of them are negative. I'm not going to go through uh, all of them. You, everybody has his own opinion. Everybody is usually very uh, opinionated about social media. Uh, for me, if I take in all this mass, what I mostly remember from all that is that a lot of people uh, started being able to, to have a voice, to be able to speak out because of social media. So that's, that's the voice of many people who could not be heard before. And of course, it has lots of negative effects. But just for that, I think it's, uh, it's worth uh, keeping them, but trying to fix them. And all this talk is going to be about trying to fix this social media. And of course, uh, I, I don't have to go into all the uh, terrible things they bring because you open the newspapers and you find them. So I don't have to participate. So as a, a computer scientist, it's, it's worth looking a little bit at what it is inside. So I, I split that into three parts, a user interface with uh, identification, personalization, most of it a, a, a graphical user interface. Then you have the network uh, aspect with all the communication, encryption, compression. That's very, all this is very important. And that, you know, I'm a database guy, as uh, Didier said. And as a database guy, I, I want to think of these guys as real databases. Essentially, uh, the social media is mostly a database with certain functionalities. And the three main functionalities, but there are many others, the three main functionalities are content recommendation. Out of the millions of uh, things that happen on the, on the web, what is interesting to you? I mean, you're on Facebook. Uh, out of all the messages in your uh, neighborhood and elsewhere, what would you be interested to read? Then there are personal ads, personalized ads, because very often the, the business model is, uh, is based on uh, advertisement. And then there is moderation, which is uh, the main topic here. Uh, we all know that the fuel of this is personal data. And uh, just as you know, just to mention some, you know, all the data that you produce, and all the data that the computer, uh, by its analysis, derives, all the understanding that it gets about what you like, what you don't like, and so on. And of course, there are serious privacy issues. And uh, in Europe, we have GDPR, and, and that's more or less uh, adopted in larger, land, larger parts of the world. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but that's, that's uh, really interesting. It's uh, the recommendation algorithm that the thing that makes the social media selects what it shows to you. So think about it again, out of the millions of interesting things in the world, they're going to present you what, five, 10, 50, and deciding which one to show to you is critical because that's the only ones you're gonna see, of course. 
and uh, this is a very these are very secret formulas. Uh, they change all they change all the time. Of course, they introduce bias, and uh, you know the worst part of it is we don't have the slightest idea what they do. Now, content moderation, which is a central topic of this talk, uh, to give you a definition, but you probably all aware of it, what it is, it's the process by which a social media platform decides to control content. Essentially content of two kinds, the kinds that are illegal. So essentially the, the illegal contents, they are required by law to, re, to withdraw them. And that's what they try to do. And then there are also a very large part of in, inappropriate content, content that this, they decide you should not see. That's not illegal. I mean, nudity, for instance, it's perfectly legal to watch nudity in France, but many social media, because they are American, will decide that they don't show nudity. Okay, so uh, again, and uh, I'd like to spend a few slides uh, to convince you, if you're not already, uh, that it is not an easy task. So something that you're probably all aware of as a computer scientist are the three Vs. First, the volume, uh, billions of units of contents a, a day. Then the variety, uh, you want to block fake news, you want to block violent messages, you want to block hate speech. You want to block copyright violations and so on. This is not an uh, exhaustive uh, list. And then velocity. I, I'm not going to speak too much in this talk about velocity, but I just want to spend a couple of minutes on this. There was this uh, video of terrorist attack in uh, attack in a church, Christ Church in 2019 in New Zealand. So again, two mosques. Many people died, and then suddenly there was a video of uh, of the the attack that that got viral, and uh, and of course you you would prefer, you know, kids, even normal people, not to watch these kinds of videos. But how do you block that? Because as soon as the video was detected, it was removed, but it was already like five copies that were viral, and you would block them, but then others and so on. Sometimes people didn't mean bad. They just thought, oh, gee, this is, this is insane. People shouldn't do that. So they would take the video and, and publish it. And of course, that's what you want to avoid. As a consequence, it was an agreement signed by many companies, big tech companies and countries, uh, essentially to fight to get this kind of thing. But here, the issue is really velocity. Because basically, you want to react very fast. You have to detect immediately, almost immediately, that the video is, is, uh, is something you don't want to see on the web. And, and basically, have to, you have to block them and block copies. Uh, it's not easy because uh, human language is not easy. There is all the ambiguity about human language. People use jargon, they use slang, they use code words, uh, they use coded language. Uh, essentially, in France, for instance, uh, certain uh, words are detected, you know, if you start doing an attack against Muslims, this, you're going to be detected and going to be blocked by some social media. So instead of calling you Muslim, they're gonna, they are going to call you Islamist. And they basically define a, a bunch of uh, coded language that, that the, the system has to detect. Figure of speeches, humor. So I'll just mention one example uh, that uh, basically because I, 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 that's something I had to face. Uh, we were when we were working on that with some member of the uh, French administration. We went to uh, uh, the different several times to Facebook centers, and once they were very happy to show us uh, this uh, thing that the that was blocked. This was a, a picture that this, the, their system decided that it was uh, offensive and that they didn't want to accept. But if you know a little bit of context, you know that this is a book by Daniel Laferriere, the guy in the below, who is a, a member of the French Academy. And this is a, a book that's actually fighting against racism. But if you like the context, this, this seems, uh, the title of the book seems uh, offensive. And they were very happy to, to show that, oh, we blocked this message. Well, sorry, guys, you should not have blocked it. 
And, and that's very often because uh, there is a lack of context. But you have to think that these, uh, the, the people that are doing uh, moderation, the moderator, they are typically in front of a screen. They see uh, flows of trash from morning to evening. That's their job. They watch these flows of trash coming from the, the web. And they have to say, well, no, 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 yes, yes. And that's, that's very difficult. And they typically do not have the contact. They just see an image. Sometimes they see the message. If the image is respond or the text is responding to a previous one, they will see the original text. And that's it. They don't know who wrote it. They don't know who publishes it. And that's how they have to decide an average of 10 seconds uh, for each message. Uh, and as I said, that's not easy. And uh, you uh, uh, maybe the situation is not as bad as described in these uh, articles, because I discussed with some of the moderators and they didn't seem to be uh, at that level. But it's certainly not something that you want to do. And actually, because of algorithm is getting worse, because the algorithms now are used to detect the messages and they're getting better. So they they re exposed to more and more higher and higher levels of, uh, of trash. Uh, now, uh, a, a per another personal note, uh, Wikipedia in French has uh, developed a bot, a bot uh, sorry, to detect some expressions such as PP and caca. So this was just for the pleasure to say loud these words in front of a serious audience. Uh, that's Essentially, that's just a very, very basic bot. It catches a lot of, uh, of, uh, of trash already. Uh, typically, for instance, they have a peak uh, immediately, immediately after school because the kids come back from school. Uh, they had some, you know, some teacher telling them about, I don't know, uh, Euler, for instance, uh, and then talking about Euler results. And then they come back, they go to the Wikipedia page of Euler and they write PP and Kaka on it. That I could say twice these words, so I'm, I'm very happy today. Uh, so how can a machine detect such undesired content? So recall the goal. You're given a piece of content, a message, a tweet, uh, uh, a message in, uh, in uh, Facebook, something like that, Instagram, whatever, picture in Instagram. And the program has to decide whether to keep it or not, whether it's legal or not, whether it's uh, acceptable for the particular uh, platform. Now, on what is the program basing the decision? First of all, you have to look at the meta level. At the meta level, there are ontologies and rules to define what's in, inappropriate. You can see that, that as some form of, uh, of applied ethics. Uh, these are some uh, protected uh, groups. Uh, this, is, this is an action and this is an adjective. If you apply this, uh, this verb with this adjective to this group, this is viewed as inappropriate. And then, then that's that's a meta level, and and there are books. I mean, if you if you go to this uh, the, the, the serious companies, there are books describing what is inappropriate, and it's uh, discussions of very serious people to decide what's uh, inappropriate. And it's changing all the time because you have to adapt to a changing environment. Now, uh, you also have the data level, and what's the data level? It's a large corpus of contents with annotation. So hundreds of thousands of contents with uh, this is OK, this is uh, hate speech, this is uh, violent, this you shouldn't do, and so on. And the, the, the annotations are, are uh, given by, the, by humans. So you have humans who go into this, all these corpus and annotate the corpus. And basically, you use a the corpus for a learning algorithm. And, and that's, that's the name of the game. The name of the game is you don't know how to write a program to detect and desired content. What you write is you use a machine learning algorithm, you throw in all this corpus, and then you, you ask, you, you, you get a new content, you, you, uh, you, tell your, you ask your trained algorithm, does this look more like something acceptable or does this look more like something you should not accept? And for what reason? That's 
a bit simplified because in fact you can do a little bit better work you can try to see in a piece of content what is the what is the object what is the subject what is the verb and you can try to use these uh, these ontologies but seriously that's that's uh, that's the name of the game okay now once i've told you that your question as computer scientists is already is you know what algorithms what can algorithm do already okay so now you have to get a bit more precise there are certain areas for, let's such as terrorism and pedopornography where they are reasonably good and actually this is also because that's these are areas where uh, basically everybody agrees on what's bad and what's not bad i mean you know pretty much every country is fighting against terrorism and as reasonably similar definition of what is a terrorist image or what is a terrorist text. Now, when you get to hate speech uh, or fake news, that's getting harder, OK? Uh, if I tell you that the Earth is flat, you all agree, I hope so, that this is a fake news. But some people in the world are not agreeing with us, OK? So that's one thing. It's much harder to, to get an agreement on that. And I took I took a flat uh, I took the flat Earth because it's kind of obvious. But if we go into vaccination, even though most people measure, you know, doctors measure the benefits of uh, of uh, of uh, vaccination, I am sure that in this audience, some of us don't believe in it. So. It's also easier for text than images. You will be always will be easily convinced by that. Now, what what is the level? What's the quality today? First of all, it's very difficult to uh, to 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 exchange, essentially know what the quality is. In my opinion, algorithms are already better to than humans to detect. Uh, undesired content, in particular things like uh, hate speech. Okay. I should not say they are better than human. I would I should say they are not as bad as human. They are not excellent, but they are improving and they're they already uh, they already better for for hate speech. Uh, do we have a proof of that? No. Do we have measurements of that? No. Uh, at least not that I know of. Uh, how do I know that? I know that because I, I spoke with a few. Uh, technical people working on that in, uh, in uh, Facebook and Google, and they told me that of the record. Also, there have been a couple of papers that mention things like that, but you know, these are the technical guys doing the experiments. So uh, are you convinced with their results? Uh, personally, you can have doubts. So many issues, lacks of precise publishable measures, uh, likely presence of biases, uh, it's very hard to define bias. What what's a bias? Okay. Uh, formally, it's it's not easy. So, also, all this is based on corpuses. Now, the corpus defines the goal, but who defines the corpus? So, for instance, uh, Facebook has a great corpus, but it's been defined by uh, Facebook engineers and Facebook specialists, OK? Uh, should I trust them? Should I believe them? I mean, is a private company, uh, it, it is, is it normal that a private company defines what you can say and what you cannot say in a public arena? It's, it's, not, very, it's not very clear. Uh, another thing that's very important is to get such a corpus, it's a huge amount of money. Very few uh, of these companies have the means to do that. And now a small company, if you ask a small company, can you do moderation? A small company would certainly not have the means to develop such a corpus. So that's why uh, personally I'm, I am uh, uh, pushing for making this uh, a global, global resource that should be shared something like a general interest resource, okay? Uh, this is general interest data. 
uh, you cannot make it open data for clear privacy reasons, okay? But you can force uh, the big guys who have them to share it with the small guys. Okay, now for the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, this question, which I hope uh, is, uh, is interesting you, which is how do we bring social medias to behave responsibly? And how do we do that while respecting democracy and freedom of speech? I won't talk about something else, which is let's shut them off, which is a perfectly fine decision if it's a, if society decides to shut them off, why not? But personally, I think they bring great stuff and, and I, I'd, I'd rather have them uh, respect democracy and freedom of speech and be responsible. So first, uh, first uh, idea, which is the one that has been uh, going on for now, which is self-regulation. So basically, uh, that's what, it's almost by law uh, in the US and in Europe, uh, we cannot really control you, do whatever you can. And uh, you know, do your decide your community rules, and uh, block pages if you want, delete the user account if you want. I mean, uh, you know, it could even go as far as deleting the account, or blocking the account of the president of the United States, which uh, many people uploaded. But it still is is uh, is uh, is a fundamental question. You know, can a private company decide to? Uh, cut off the president of United States who has been elected, whether you like him or not. Uh, so uh, on the left, uh, you can see some difficulties. One of them is that it's very complex. It's not a source of revenue. So very most, most of these social media invest very little in that. Okay? And the, 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 the two sides are, are really impossible to separate. Uh, either you moderate too much and you violate freedom of speech, or you moderate too little and you harm, you, you do harmful effects on your users. And even if you, 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 you would be perfect, and I absolutely have no idea what it means, okay? Uh, what's your le legitimacy to do that? And uh, I, I put on the right uh, uh, column Facebook example, because I studied Facebook, uh, 15,000 human moderators, uh, very probably some of the best algorithmic de de detection of undesired content. They have a notification, a, a appeal mechanism. So on the face of it, they are the good guys. Still, they are very criticized, and for good reasons. Why do, do they, they, why do they cut my my message? Why did they let this message that I, I really think is offensive go? Uh, and the other do much worse. So the an alternative for that is a direct state regulation uh, based on uh, two motivations. Uh, internet cannot remain a low, lawless zone, which most people agree would agree. And the difficulty is that the government does, doesn't have the means to, to, to control these huge amount of content. I mean, billions of content. Uh, you would need, uh, you would need uh, thousands of uh, government employees just to have a look at them. Second motivation in some countries is controlling, uh, you know, less democratic countries is controlling public opinion. And, uh, you know, personally, I, I'd, I'd rather not have that kind of thing. Now, what uh, seems to be coming out after lots of thinking in, in, uh, in Europe, and I participated in, in this thinking by, by being in a task force where we did, did study the problem, is uh, regulation under state supervision. And uh, in Europe, there is in preparation something that's called the Digital Service Services Act. Uh, there is something also in UK, which I know less, but seems uh, also quite interesting. There is a, a different thing also for concurrency, which is competition, which is the Digital Markets Act. And there also in, in UK, there is something very advanced on the topic. and. In the US also, people are thinking about that. So it's, it's kind of worldwide, probably elsewhere in Europe, in, in the world where that I'm not aware of, but definitely in Europe, in UK, in, in the US, this is progressing. So for Europe, um, uh, it's the Digital Services Act that's planned around 2022, 23, basically planning to do moderation of content. 
and uh, uh, targeting platforms that publish content in line. And uh, you would like to have more participation of society, but I don't want to go into the details. Uh, the idea is to switch to basically uh, add uh, obligations to platform to, to uh, in advance, do moderation. So the, the, the typical thing that we're doing up to now was to say, well, you've let this message that's illegal go, and you should not, so we're going to punish you. Now, in a kind of different approach, uh, obligation of means, if you, if you, if you know the, the terminology, you're going to say, well, you have to invent a decent amount of your power to fix the problems. So you have to, to you know, assess the risk, and you have to assign the means to handle them. So it's obligation of means and not of results. And there is a national level, uh, a European level, but basically, the you know, to make it short, uh, the idea is uh, the social media should not be alone to try to 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 uh, to fight the problem. It should do it together with the state supervision. So basically, the goals should be should should be set together. The state should have uh, the, the the company should be very transparent, and the state should have the means. To, to essentially evaluate what the, the social media is doing and, and eventually punish them if they're not doing good. Because as I said, not all social, social medias behave the same. I mentioned several times Facebook, that's, as I said, it's, it's one of the good ones, even if it's heavily criticized. But on the other hand, you have uh, uh, VK, uh, a, social a Russian social media, which uh, were all the, uh, the uh, racist in France moved after they were blocked from Facebook. So the extreme right was blocked from Facebook at some point, and they basically switched all their content immediately to, to VK, because VK basically you can publish whatever you like. So strong penalties. And uh, I don't want to conclude with penalties and, uh, and, uh, and government strong, uh, strong uh, influence on, on companies. So I want to look at a different uh, and, a, and an alternative that seems for me the better solution in long term, which is some kind of soft power. So the first thing is, uh, you know, you have to change the users. And changing the users as, you know, lots of teachers in the audience, you will, and you all agree with me that eventually the, the, the best way to, to attack the problem. And you have to ed educate the users. You have to inform them. You have, they have to know how they, what they do. You have to make them participate. We will come back to that participation. Uh, education, essentially, you, you should learn how to query the content you find on the social media. You have to think about what you publish. So it's not only consuming, but it's also producing. When you produce content, you have to think about what you're producing. You have to learn how to protect your privacy. Uh, and you have to learn the value of dialogue. And that also, we will we, we come back to that. And the last point, uh, which I think is particularly important for me, is uh, understanding the technology. A lot of the problems that the people don't understand what they're doing, they don't understand what the recommendation system is. They don't understand what, uh, what it means to, put, to publish some data in, in, this, uh, in this case. Uh, the second, so you can change the, the users, but you can also change the, the social medias themselves. So one uh, nice approach uh, is a WT Social, where it's, it's uh, the guy we did uh, Wikipedia started that as well. And the, the idea is uh, we're not going to have thousands of moderators. You are a user of this platform. You should participate in the moderation. So the, the users moderate themselves. And they, they really are implied in the, in the platform. Uh, also, what's interesting is the business model is, is different. Uh, a lot of the problems, I didn't speak about that because, uh, you know, uh, half an hour is uh, 45 minutes is short, but I, I think a lot of the problem is, is in the business model and uh, we, you know, 
uh, pacified interaction, yeah, but that's okay. Personally, I find that a bit boring. You know, you 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 want to discuss on this platform. You you want to fight. Just have to fight in a decent manner. And then there is Mastodon, which is also a very nice thing, which is P2P net networking. That's really more acting actually on the on the on the business model against the network effect, which means that the you have to grow you have to everybody has to go to instagram because all your friends are in instagram why why is that we we don't have to go to verizon because our friends have verizon telephones why do we have to go to instagram because most of the people we know are on instagram okay or why, why do we have to have a, a, a social media instagram and twitter and uh, and uh, and facebook we don't need to have a uh, a telephone for Verizon, a telephone for Orange, and a telephone for O2. It's not how it works, right? Interoperability uh, of social media is, is really a, a key aspect. Uh, last uh, is a promote dialogue. You know, a lot of the problem is, uh, at least for hate speech, is people insulting each other. Well, learn how to not insult each other. So there is Moonshot CV that's uh, essentially trying to detect people identify users who are the origin or the de destination of hate speech. And uh, there is also the redirect method where they basically, uh, you know, you, you are, you are on, uh, on one of the social media and you start hating everybody. And sometimes, you know, you're a racist uh, and, and, uh, and you, you write all the time and suddenly somebody knocks at your door and the guy is, uh, obviously black or Jewish or Muslim and says, well, why do you hate us and start a discussion? I'm not saying it's easy. And I'm saying, you should, I'm not saying you should do it tomorrow. You should do it within an, an association because people have to, to, to tell you how it works. So conclusion. Uh, so uh, basically like many new technologies, social media bring the best and the worst. That's uh, yeah, they open lots of questions, you know, how do you change with these guys? And uh, the, the answer is we must collectively choose what to do with social media. As I said, if the decision is to shut them off, why not? But, but personally, I think that with the support of education, laws and technology, we can turn them on something in, in, in a great tool that uh, we can enjoy uh, without uh, being harmed. And that's all I wanted to say. A uh, little bit of advertisement for a book. It's uh, Le Temps des Algorithmes in French with Gilles Dovec. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it did very well in France. It uh, just got translated into English. And uh, also I mentioned several times the work uh, I did uh, for, with the French, for the French government against uh, uh, hate speech in social media, and that's uh, there is a report on that. And now I'm open to questions. Okay, thank you very much, Serge. Yes.